this week, and we're going to try and uh, look at uh, other books that can help us to read and to understand the Bible properly or, or effectively with it. So one of those is a concordance. Um, so if, if you're trying to find a particular verse and, and you can't remember where it is, uh, but you know one or two of the key words, you can look in a concordance and it will list every, um, every time that, that that word is, is published in the Bible. And so scanning down that list, you'll be able to find the word and therefore the passage the verse that you're looking for. Also, a concordance uh, bullet point two, very useful in performing uh, Bible study and looking at the passages that relate to each other. So, a particular theme uh, around a word can appear both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, and the concordance can very much help us to, to locate those themes and those threads through God's Word. So a lexicon is a little bit different to a concordance, more of a, what we call a dictionary really. The, the Bible was largely written in Hebrew and Greek, there is some Aramaic as well in the prophecy of Daniel, one or two Aramaic words in, in the Gospels that, that the Lord Jesus uttered. Um, so that's to help us understand the definition of a, of a particular word. Um, and how it's used in, in the scriptures. So we're going to have a, a look at how a concord concordance is. You think the Bible's thick, um, mine's quite thick. Concordance is probably about four times the thickness of, of my Bible. And so they're, they're very meaty uh, works indeed. So this example we're going to look at was when Jesus was actually nailed to the cross in the process of, of dying. Uh, and from Matthew 27, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which translated means, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Um, obviously the, the Lord Jesus was in, um, in severe pain whilst on the cross. And you might think that, that this is a, a kind of rebellious statement that, that Jesus Christ came out with, that he, he felt so alone um, in, in the, the throes of death. But really, we, we know that he was actually uh, quoting from, from the Old Testament. And, and uh, if you can't remember where it was in the Old Testament, that, that you've heard that phrase before, then a concordance can help us find that. So, from that phrase, the, the, the ideal would be to, to look at the word forsaken, which in, in the concordance is in the English, and to try and find the occurrences. And we find that the root, or, or the word forsaken, occurs 74 times. So it's, it's a fairly common word. So there's quite a few uh, verses to, to look at and go through, but the concordance paraphrases part of the verse for us. So it's actually then even uh, simpler to find that the one verse, maybe, or the two or three verses that we're looking for. And of course, uh, concordances have been around for 100 years or more. Uh, we're now in the enlightened age of, uh, of computers and, and software power, and so there are online concordances that can be used as well that may uh, help us to track down the, the, the subject even, even more quickly. So here's an example of an online concordance for us. Um, we can see that the concordance is, is um, themed on the authorised version, highlighted in, in blue there. The, the phrase has been typed into the search engine part of, of the concordance. And then it takes us to three verses in the Bible where that phrase, not just the word forsaken, but that whole phrase 
is, uh, is, is cited. So we can see here that there are two New Testament um, occurrences, which is the words that Jesus said in Matthew and, and in Mark. And then the Old Testament uh, verse is from Psalm 22. So if you could turn to Psalm 22 in your Bible, we'll have a look at that. It's on page 548 in your um, Black Bible. And it's verse 1 of, of this psalm, Psalm 22. And this is a psalm of David. So, David, as we know, as we said earlier, is, is this um, ancestor of, of, of Jesus Christ. David wrote many of the psalms. And so here, David says in verse 1, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not, and in the night season, and am not silent. So we'll just stop there. So this is at a time in David's life when he obviously felt isolated. Um, we know from the history of, of, of Israel and the history of David that his father-in-law, Saul, uh, the first king of, of Judah, was extremely jealous of of the blessings that God had, had poured upon David. And, and so several times Saul went out with his army to try and capture David and, and, uh, and his supporters. And David uh, managed through, um, through the, the help of the Lord undoubtedly to, to keep evading Saul time after time after time. And there would have been several occasions when um, David in fact could have taken Saul's life had he been that way inclined but, but David was faithful to the Lord and the fact that Saul was the Lord's anointed the, the first king in Judah so he refrained from doing that even though his men um, kind of egged him on to do so so this is the verse that that Jesus is actually quoting from when Matthew, when when we looked at that verse in, from Matthew so it's been speculated, and I think it's quite likely, that Jesus um, actually recited the whole psalm while he was on the cross. While we're here, we can, we can just look at one or two uh, prophetic echoes, as it were, in, in, this, um, in this psalm. Um, So if we look at verse, uh, verse 13, and, and we can imagine the Lord Jesus Christ nailed to that cross uh, in the process of death, and as we said, um, reciting this psalm. Verse 13, uh, they gape upon me with their mouths as a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted in the midst of my bowels, my strength is dried up like the pot's herd, my tongue cleaveth to my jaws, and thou hast brought me into the dust of death, for the dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have been closed in. They pierced my hands and feet, I may tell all my bones, they look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. So those few verses are in fact what's happened to, to Jesus Christ on the cross. Perhaps when you get home, look at the, the, the Gospels for the actual um, incident of, of Jesus on the cross. The Roman soldiers did uh, cast lots for his, his coat and they obviously pierced his hands and feet in, in terms of nailing him to the cross so David through the inspiration of the Almighty uh, wrote this psalm partly connected to his own situation but also prophetically 
certainly for um, the crucifixion of, of the Lord Jesus Christ and, and it's therefore so apt um, almost ironic isn't it that Jesus would recite this psalm whilst um, on the cross but he found comfort um, in that time of need uh, when um, by, by looking at the Old Testament which he knew very well indeed and, and, and many of the psalms were recited by all of the people in, in Israel at that time <laughs> so Jesus um, recited this for the love of those around him particularly his mother and the apostles that were there um, bro broken hearted no doubt at what was going on but for the love that he had for them um, so that those individuals could see that what David had written was part of God's plan that, and that Jesus had already told them that uh, he would die um, you know, in, in, in the short space of time that he was there. So that this is how the concordance can help us to find a passage um, and, and to take us to the right place by listing through all of those verses that have, have uh, given it to us. So then we come to um, the way in which a lexicon um, can help us, which as we said is a more of a dictionary really. This um, this aspect here, on, again, uh, a PC-based lexicon, is on the word Bethel. And you can see that there is um, a number, 101008, 01008. Um, they're all the same. Yep, it's a bit out of focus. But, so the, the word Bethel is another word here that we can see in different passages, Genesis 12, 13, 28, 31, 35, 35, again, 35, again, 35, again, uh, 35, again. So there's quite a few occurrences in Genesis 35 where this place, um, which is in Canaan, in Israel, uh, is mentioned. So it gives us more detailed information. Um, it gives us the Hebrew way of translating the word or speaking the word, which doesn't come naturally, of course, to a common or garden Englishman like me. Um, we can see that the word in the authorised version is uh, given to us 66 times, the word Bethel. Um, and it means house of God. So, for example, Jacob, when he was... Uh, sent away to, to find a wife for himself, he came to this place and slept there one night. Um, and it was then called the house of God because of the visions that, that Jacob saw. So we're also given some more information, historic information, that it was an ancient place, a seat of worship in the tribal area of Ephraim, on the border of Benjamin, uh, and the former name of this place was Luz. So Jacob, in fact, called it Bethel, the house of God, beforehand it was known as Luz Luz. So a place in the south country of Judah, not far from Beersheba and Ziklag. So here we see that there were two places called Bethel. So it's all very useful um, and, and interesting when we do particular Bible study. So when, we, um, when we're looking at the, the other uh, numbers where this word occurs, we can use the, the text search box to help us locate those. Um, so in Genesis 14, we can read that Melchizedek, um, who is a, a curious character in, in Genesis, who Abraham met, Melchizedek, king of Salem, so we know Salem is, is um, the place that has got now a, a, a longer name or title, which is Jerusalem. So Salem is the 
second half of uh, the capital of Israel, Jerusalem. So Melchizedek brought forth bread and wine, and he was priest of the Most High God. So he is this curious character indeed in, in, in the Word of God. Um, sorry, I went too far there. Got the wrong thing. And so it's using these, um, these numbered codes that helps us find them. And here we see that the, the word God in the English is the word El in, in the Hebrew. So Beth, El, house of God, is how we can break down the word. So here's a, another example. The Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house. So again, we've got the, the, the code number for us. And that's the word Beth. So we can, you can see how we can put the two uh, words together to find Bethel. So we'll, we'll read the full verse. The Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and thy, all thy house, which is Beth, into the ark. Uh, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. So this was the fact that the house of Noah was saved by the ark and, and the instruction from the Lord um, to embark upon that craft that he built and he was obviously saved in the deluge. So here's um, a, a more succinct explanation of how these numbered words from the lexicon can come together to help us with the, with the word itself as the house of God. So a few times in the scripture, the, the Hebrew word Bethel is not just a place name. So in Genesis 28, verse 17, we read, this is none other but the house of God. So it doesn't refer to Bethel, but it uses that, the characteristics from the, the Hebrew alphabet. In verse 22, uh, shall be God's house. So it's used in a, in a different context as well. So using accordance is useful to try and locate a verse when you can remember a key word as, or part of the phrase and useful in performing uh, studies by looking at all the passages where that phrase or that word can be found. And the, dexi the lexicon sorry, is more of a dictionary used for the definition of words and, and to show us how else a word is used in scripture in, in different applications, as it were. 